Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode 62 of the Modern Persian Food Podcast. This is Bita, and I'm with the other Bita, and we are talking about the holidays. So exciting. It's that special time of the year, and what we want to share with you today is a Persian-inspired cross-cultural menu for your holiday feast. We really want to share our favorite traditions to inspire you to bring Persian flavors to your holiday table to share with your friends and family. So great. Hi, Bita June. How's it going? Hi, Bita. I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this. It's never too late to start a new tradition. And I think with the holidays, since they happen once a year, it's a great time to bring in something that you do year in and year out. And so today we're going to talk about traditions around food in the winter holidays. Sounds great. Top of the morning, Christmas Day, or whatever day it is that you're celebrating, what are some of the fun things that we like to do? I personally, in my family, and it's kind of a tradition that started with my husband's family, and that now we've kind of adapted to our new version, is cinnamon rolls. We wake up early and usually there's a big batch of cinnamon rolls with the smell of the cinnamon and sugar all floating through the house, which is so great. But what I've started making are jeweled cinnamon rolls. And what I mean by that is basically it's inspired by the regular traditional cinnamon roll. But what I do is I get a big sheet of puff pastry. I thaw it out and then I put melted butter down and a little bit of cinnamon. And then I also incorporate dried nuts and dried fruits. And then I roll them all up and then I slice it and then I bake it off that way. But it just adds so much more fun. So really, it's kind of like if you think about the Persian trail mix, Ajil, it takes inspiration from that and includes some of those flavors in there. So a lot of times I'll put like slivered almonds in there, like raisins and dried cranberries and apricots. So kind of like whatever you really have, you can kind of customize it. I do have a recipe for it, but it's just so fluid that you can really like do whatever you have in your cupboard or any kind of like the flavors that you love during the season, during the holidays, you can kind of incorporate that into the little jeweled roll. So, you know, if you want to spice up your standard cinnamon roll, why don't you try a jeweled cinnamon roll instead this year? That's one of my go-tos. I love that. And I tried to make them last year inspired by you. Uh And after our winter flavors episode, and they're really delicious. And one of the things I love about them is that they use an ingredient that I have around anyway. Mm -hmm. And that is the Persian trail mix, the dried fruits, the nuts. And the other thing I use it for is for a rice dish that we'll be talking about. So it's great because I have the ingredients anyhow. Last year, I picked up the puff pastry, and I wasn't necessarily looking for gluten-free, but that's all they had. And so I made them gluten-free based on what they had, and it worked out. Mm -hmm. They almost had like a baklava taste to them. Mm. So it might have been from the cinnamon and cardamom that I sprinkled into my version. And they're delicious. So it's a great idea. For breakfast or appetizers, definitely give it a shot and let us know what you think of the jeweled cinnamon rolls. What do you like to do for breakfast on your holiday menu? Yeah, we always have something easy and that I can make pre-made. When the kids were young, I wanted it to be already done so that I could enjoy the time and, you know, Mm -hmm. tearing open of the presents and whatnot. So we always have a French toast casserole. What I love about French toast casseroles is that you can switch it up. And so the recipe that we make uses challah bread. Mm -hmm. It's a good fluffy bread that lends very well to this recipe. And you can use milk or cream. Traditionally, it's sweetened with a maple syrup. And we often put blueberries in it. But now if you could try some other versions and add some Persian flair very easily, substitute the maple syrup with pomegranate molasses or date syrup. Yes. Sprinkle in some of that cinnamon and cardamom for the flavors. And you could even try some other kinds of fruit, some 
persimmon, some quince, sprinkle it with pomegranate arils. You could even try it with a Persian bread like a barbari. Oh. I have not done that. However, I would probably soak it a little bit longer in the cream or milk just to make sure that fresh fluffy barbari gets all the yummy moistness and then serve it after it's baked. So you can make it ahead. Bake it on, you know, Christmas morning, and then I would serve it with some fresh whipped cream or creme fraiche and some berries on top, mm, or maybe with a little powdered sugar. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Also, I think that that challah bread will be really great to mixture. You said the milk and cream and, and also with egg mixture. It could just really soak it all up. So I think that's a great bread choice Mm -hmm. to use for that. And to your point, it's perfect. You can make it the night before and then just pop it in the oven in the morning and you've got breakfast ready to go. Yeah, make it your own. Another very delicious thing would be to use vanilla, a vanilla extract. There's a vanilla bean paste, which I love. Mm -hmm. And put that with a little cardamom, vanilla cardamom French toast. Sounds delicious. Good Mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Those are some breakfast ideas that you guys can try. But going into like, as we get closer to the big meal, what about some like appetizers? Do you have any kind of go-to appetizers that you like to serve on Christmas? Ah, yes. I'm obsessed with appetizers. Sometimes I think I like appetizers more than the main meal. Like I could just, that's one of the things I love about holiday parties. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So good. They're usually just rich and decadent and just so easy to have one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. (laughs) Who's counting? (laughs) This year, our older daughter made a new appetizer that went over really well. I loved it. It was actually in a puff pastry. You could also use a crescent roll. Mm -hmm. And inside is brie. So you bake the brie inside there with a little jam. Thanksgiving time, she experimented it with the cranberry sauce, Mm -hmm. but you could use like any type of jelly or jam. Mm -hmm. We love it with like a peppered jelly or jam, and it's easy to make any jam peppered. So take quince jam if you want more Persian flair. Quince, I have the plum jam recipe. You can just add some chili peppers in there. It really elevates this appetizer with some zing. And then it has chopped pecans And a little sprig of herb, rosemary looks lovely. And you wrap it up and you bake that. Oh, these are so easy to pop. Wow. So is that like the whole brie wheel, like the whole circular wheel that you use? Yeah, we do. Yeah, that mm-hmm. sounds great. And you know, also a uh, jam I was thinking about maybe like Marabai al Balu, mm. the sour cherry jam, mm-hmm. and get that little spicy with the chilies. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I think I'm going to definitely have to try that. Yeah, and I recommend that you enjoy it warm. Mm. It's one of those things that, you know, the baked brie is so delicious, right warm out of the oven. Yeah, I can't wait to try that. That's definitely going to go on my menu this year. Yeah, what else do you like to do for appetizers and snacks to have around the holidays? You know, I think a big cheese platter or a cartridge board really is perfect because people can kind of like graze on it, take a little bit here, take a little bit of there, you know, like some good prosciutto or salami on the side of that and a variety of different cheeses. And I also love like adding the little like quince paste on the side or some dried cherries just to add a little bit of like the fruit to it. I think that those are always like great for a party because you can just, you know, have it interactive and also people can kind of like pick and choose what they like. Yes, I love that too. I love a little sweet in my cheese board. You can also make them really beautiful. They're fun to set up. To add, again, some Mediterranean flair figs look really nice. Fresh figs I love. Mm -hmm. Honey. I love honey with a good cheese board. Definitely some nuts. So along with a variety of crackers, I like to also have like a fluffy whole wheat pita or some sort of a like a nice bread so that you can actually... Depending on how hungry you are, you can make like a little lavash sandwich. I love the wine cheese, the like Merlot cheese. It has like wine on one side of it. Mm. It's delicious. I also really love the salty hard cheeses personally. And it just lends so well with a little sweet pepper jam or honey, a nut. 
maybe a fresh fruit, like you said. Yeah. The figs and grapes. I like to make them mm-hmm. colorful. Mm-hmm. You could put some leaves around it and get creative. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea for the presentation. Yeah, make it a beautiful presentation. And what's good about the kind of the boards like that is that it's not too filling. So you can kind of like graze on a little bit, but you're not going to get too full for the main event. When I think about Christmas, I think about a big fat roast of some sort and some other foods to go with it. But like the main thing for me is a big fat standing rib roast cooked medium rare on the bone is my like favorite thing. That's what I think about like a big Christmas meal. That's what I love. And so I was thinking of how could I incorporate some Persian flavors to this because I just love horseradish with my beef roast. So I was playing around with some ideas and I actually was recipe testing this and I'm, I'm in love with it is basically taking like a horseradish cream sauce and spiking it with pomegranate molasses And I tried it and I love it. And I can't wait for Christmas Day to be able to actually like pair it together and eat it with the standing rib roast. So basically, you could get prepared horseradish like in a jar. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And mix that about equal parts because I like mine to have like a pretty big kick to it. About equal parts with either you could use sour cream, you could use yogurt if you wanted to like, you know, just have a little bit healthier I mix that up. And then I put a few tablespoons of the pomegranate molasses in there and I mix it all up and it is delicious. So I highly recommend that everyone adds this pomegranate horseradish sauce to their menu. I even experimented with like garnishing it with a little fresh pomegranate as well. That actually adds like a little extra punch of flavor and tartness to it. So I think you can kind of play around with that if you want to have that little bit of extra kick to it or not. But even without the fresh pomegranate, it is like super flavorful. So I'm super excited about that to kind of like Persianify the rib roast. But yeah, a big meat is kind of like the focal point in the center of the table. Do you guys do a big meat too? We have. So growing up, my mom used to make roast beef. And she would make a delicious roast beef, and she would always cook it with the same mixed vegetables. She would either do actually meatloaf or roast beef in the Midwest, and it was delicious. And she had her, you know, carrot, potato, onion, roast vegetables around it. And it was really nice, warm, stick to your ribs kind of winter meal. Uh-huh. Many years ago, I used to do lamb. Um, mm. Our family, Bob and I, we really enjoy lamb either on the grill, but on a winter holiday like this, I would make it in the oven, get a big roast leg of lamb, and I would actually pierce it and insert cloves of garlic Uh into the leg of lamb. And really simple recipe. I think that's all it needs is the garlic. And then sometimes I'd glaze it with like a Dijon mustard. Really nice results that way. So that's a delicious roast like a lamb recipe. Pierce it with cloves of garlic add a Dijon mustard all around. And the vegetables that I've been making, I like to make a sumac, which is a Persian citrusy spice. I make a sumac roasted vegetables as a side Mm -hmm. to the leg of lamb. So that's delicious. To be honest, in recent years, the make-ahead dinner meal that we enjoy is what I call Christmas enchiladas. It's something I picked up after a girl's trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I discovered what they would call Christmas enchilada sauce. And Mm. it was pretty cool. They used it, you know, on all sorts of things, on their burritos. And I dumb it way down. It's not Santa Fe anymore, but I just basically will make it so easy. You can find green salsa in the grocery store. You can find red salsa. You can also use red enchilada sauce. But what I love is I can make it ahead. Mm -hmm. And our family here absolutely loves Mexican food. So that works for us. Yeah, that's delicious. Another alternative, if you don't want to necessarily do a big meat, is to do seafood for the big day. And this recipe is more inspired from the Italian or Sicilian Feast of the Seven Fishes. So what that is, is basically on Christmas Eve, they celebrate it. But you can definitely do this on Christmas Day. And what I love doing with seafood and trying to add a Persian flair to it is to add saffron. So what I'll do is I do roasted shrimp, 
with saffron on it and a little bit of lemon juice. And that really is so fun because it brings the beautiful aroma of the saffron. What we do is we bloom the saffron first. So you add hot water to the ground saffron strands in like a little like cup or like a little jar or something and cover it for a few minutes. And so that the saffron blooms and it turns into this beautiful radiant orangish red color you just basically get a sheet pan toss it with a little bit of olive oil and put it in the oven really like eight or nine minutes you will know when the shrimp is cooked when it kind of changes to opaque from like a translucent to an opaque color and texture and then that's it i add the saffron to it and it's like a beautiful presentation and it's super great because if you don't want to do a big meat dish this is kind of an alternative and it pays homage to the italian tradition of the feast of the seven fishes How interesting. Do you have Sicilian family members? Yeah, my sister-in-law Sicilian. I have great Italian friends and I love Italy. So I love that. It's a good blending of cultures. I need to ask my bestie. I have a bestie, Trish, and I ask her if they do anything like that. That's what it's all about, right? Taking a tradition and adding your own culture and making it work for you and your family. Absolutely. That sounds delicious. I have a saffron, an easy saffron salmon recipe. I'm actually going to make it tonight. I'm defrosting the fish. Mine is so simple. Literally, I used my saffron spray, my cheap. Oh, Yeah, there's a couple brands that make saffron spray. So you don't have to go through dissolving the saffron strands. Uh You can just spray it right on there. Yeah. That's great. And then you're using frozen fish too. So that's super easy and convenient. Yeah. Mm, Sounds delicious. So those are kind of like some main things. But I do think another dish that's so beautiful visually and tastes so good is the jeweled rice. So jeweled rice and also we have like a jeweled tachin version. But the jeweled rice basically is the beautiful saffron rice that is garnished with barberries and or cranberries and slivered almonds and slivered pistachios and orange peel and sometimes carrot depending on the recipe that you're using so those are super beautiful colors and flavors that is really a showstopper of a dish to bring that out and serve that on your holiday table is definitely going to get everyone super excited and mouth salivating for the beautiful jeweled rice or jeweled tagine dish That's one of my favorite mixed rice dishes. Mm -hmm. I have a post as well for a layered Persian rice, jeweled rice. Uh And I made it last year based on our conversations and added it to our traditions. So it's also known as Shirin Polo. But it is this beautiful, colorful, think of crown jewels. Mm -hmm. What better dish for the king of kings (laughs) for the holiday? So I love that connection. Yes, it's so festive. It is. It's a great dish to have. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so these are some of our favorite dishes to serve as the main course for our holiday meal. But let's talk about some like sweets. You have a big sweet tradition that you do. What tell us about it? Yeah, sweets. My family has a lot of folks with sweet tooths. Sweet teeth. <laughs> we love cookies. I love cookies. Love Christmas cookies. Every year since we've lived in this house every single year for 15, 16 years. We have a tradition of having a cookie party, a cookie exchange party. If you're not familiar with that, that's where everybody brings a plate of cookies. You can bake them. I always say don't worry about baking them if you're not a baker. You can pick them up. You can buy them. You bring a plate of cookies. And what's fun about it is you go home with a huge assortment. Now, some people around the holidays who have a lot of energy or plan ahead, I don't know, freeze their dough, somehow magically have five or six different kinds of cookies. And I used to always wonder, how on earth do you do that? And then I realized that, hey, like the concept of the Christmas cookie party exchange is that, you know, you don't have to make six different kinds of cookies. You can make one Uh and specialize in one or bring one and get to take home a fun assortment. And so I try to have it close to actual Christmas. So we have some left over for Santa and for just enjoying on Christmas. And so, yeah, my mom is not a baker. She's a wonderful cook. Love all her food, but she's not a baker. So she picks up Persian cookies from a Persian market or, you know, Persian bakery. And Persian cookies are the little itsy bitsy, actually mostly gluten-free rice flour, chickpea flour, almond paste, walnut. Persian cookies are delicious. So They're unique. So she brings her little store-bought Persian cookies to the party. Yeah, I think we definitely have to have a 
Persian cookie episode in the future, but there are just so many different types of Persian cookies and they're so delicious and they're so small and cute. So I love that idea of bringing Persian cookies to the cookie exchange. That sounds really fun. And it's great for people who like don't really know too much about Persian cuisine or Persian cookies that they can try something new and get, get a few more fans. Your jeweled cinnamon rolls work for dessert. I took them to that party for dessert. Yeah, you're right. It does. And what's good about those too is that they're small. So, you know, you don't have to like have to worry about cutting a cake or anything like that or serving like pie. You know, they're just easy. You could just pick them up with your hands and have like little individual servings of those. Absolutely. This has been so fun. We hope that the menu that we've shared inspires you to perhaps try some of these things and add them to your winter holiday traditions. Happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas or whatever holiday it is that you guys are celebrating. Thank you for being a listener to us. And we hope that some of the menu items that we talked about today have inspired you to bring some of those Persian flavors to your table. And we look forward to having some more fun episodes next week. We're talking about Shabiyan Da, which is a fun old Persian holiday that we're going to talk more about. It's the longest night of the year on the winter solstice. And yeah, we're planning out some fun episodes for the rest of the year and for the next year. And thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Happy winter holidays. Merry Persian Christmas. Bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Music.